Welcome to Module 11. How can the anthropic values of our universe's constants be explained? Pure chance? Multiple universes? Or supernatural design? This is the first module in a 12-module series entitled God and Modern Physics. It is presented by Father Robert J. Spitzer of the Maja Center of Reason and Faith, and it is based on his recently released book, New Proofs for the Existence of God, Contributions of Contemporary Physics and Philosophy. Welcome to the Maja Center of Reason and Faith series, God and Modern Physics. I'm Father Robert Spitzer, and we've been talking about the evidence for creator, supernatural design for God that comes from contemporary physics and astrophysics. We have specifically been talking about anthropic coincidences now. Um, things, conditions of the universe, or values of constants, which are absolutely necessary in order for a life form to develop. Yet they are highly, highly, highly improbable. And, and so it leads to the inevitable conclusion, well, that we are going to have to choose between one of three options, pure chance, the cosmological constant had the value by pure chance, or that there was a super intelligent designer, or that there were a multiplicity of universes in which we get multiple rolls of the dice. Let's just go through each of these three possible explanations for these anthropic coincidences, these necessary but highly improbable for conditions of life which just happen to occur in our universe. Let's take pure chance. Most physicists would agree pure chance is simply out of the question. You get one roll of the dice to get the Penrose number, to get uh, you know, a low entropy universe. 10 to the 10 to the 123 to 1 is going to happen. One roll of the dice, not likely. Uh, you're not going to get the value of the gravitational constant and the weak force constant coming to within one part in 10 to the 50th in order to be the values that they are in order for our universe not to explode upon expansion or catastrophically collapse. All these things are just, no way can this be explained by pure chance. The odds are just simply way, way, way too far against their occurrence. So we're going to have to find another explanation. Supernatural design, clearly. That means that some kind of a creative force uh, infused the universe from its very beginning with the initial conditions that would lead to low entropy and infused the universe from the very beginning with the values of the 20 constants so that a life form could possibly emerge when, of course, it would have been otherwise highly improbable. Uh, the only other solution, really, that physicists have come up with is what's called the multiple universe theory. And the reason for talking about a multiverse or multiple universes um, is to try and get many rolls of the dice. Essentially, if rolling the dice to get 10 to the 10 to the 123 to 1, if that's not going to be very probable, well, maybe I could say then that there were 10 raised to the 10 raised to the 123 unobserved, and perhaps unobservable universes, but they're out there. And so if I, I, that means I get lots of rolls of the dice. And, and essentially, if I can roll the dice 10 to the 10 to the 123 times, corresponding to the 10 to the 10 to the 123 unobserved and unobservable universes, then, of course, perhaps naturalistically, I could explain why our universe has the highly, highly improbable conditions that it does. Well, today there are really uh, three uh, ways in which uh, physicists try to explain uh, the multiple universe theory, but uh, we're just going to take uh, two of them very, very quickly so you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, one of them is, is uh, uh, a proposal by Andre Lind uh, which, where he holds that, the, uh, that uh, there was a multiverse, uh, what he calls a, a chaotic uh, you know, fractioning, fractile universe, uh, which uh, uh, starts off uh, because of an inflationary condition and continues to spawn uh, through the various levels of the scalar field, continues to spawn all kinds of other universes within a single multiverse. And in this particular model, 
um, what we have then are a variety of, multi, uh, of universes uh, within the multiverse, but three things need to be observed. The first thing is, this is a highly speculative theory. There's absolutely no evidence for a multiverse whatsoever. Just the possibility that an inflationary condition would allow for a multiverse. The second thing to notice is that um, uh, those other universes may in principle be unobserved and unobservable. Uh, there is a current attempt to try and get some evidence, but really right now they're unobserved and they may well be unobservable. And that's a problem because physics is based on empirical evidence. But then the third thing is perhaps the most daunting, and, and that is when Lind uh, proposed this uh, in, in the first uh, way of looking at inflation, um, there was a problem, uh, namely the collision of bubbles, the collision of bubble universes. A and that collision, of course, would have been absolutely catastrophic uh, for uh, the uh, uh, arising of life, e even if the constants were right. So what happened was, in order to get, avoid the collision, there had to be fine-tuning written into the multiverse itself so that it could have a slow roll in which a collision would not occur. Now, here's the problem. The fine-tuning of the multiverse to avoid the collision of the bubbles is just as improbable as the constants of our universe that it's supposed to explain. In other words, the multiverse doesn't get us out of anything. It's based on speculative and shaky assumptions, and at the end of the day, it requires as much fine-tuning as the universe and, and its constants that it's attempting to explain. So it really isn't an explanation. It's not a way out. The same thing actually holds true for the string theory landscape, uh, another uh, very fine theory um, which uh, proposes uh, in perhaps a more complex way and perhaps a more reasonable way uh, proposes uh, the rolling out from the false vacua that are possible uh, you know, in a string theoretical configuration, uh, the possibility of getting perhaps as many as 10 to the 500th uh, different universes that might be able to arise uh, out of this condition. Now, the same three problems arise out of this, and one more besides. Uh, the first is that it may actually, Michael Dine has uh, amassed some pretty important evidence to suggest that the string theory landscape really cannot be connected with the empirical observations of our universe as it stands, and that is explained in my book, New Proofs for the Existence of God. Secondly, you've got the problem of the unobserved and unobservable universes. The third thing, of course, is, again, the metafine tuning that is required in order for the rollout of the string theory landscape requires so much fine tuning that it's as much fine tuning as the universe which it's attempting to explain. It really doesn't get us out of it. In fact, currently, there is no multiple universe theory that actually really works, that doesn't require as much fine-tuning as the universe that it's trying to explain, and that allows us to even observe or visit the universes which are per perpetuated. And because of this reason, right now, it looks very reasonable and very responsible to conclude to what Fred Hoyle concluded, namely, that there are no blind forces worth speaking about, and that it is very likely that our universe began with a super-calculating super-intellect, which sets the initial conditions of our universe, which gives rise to the low entropy condition required for life, though highly improbable, which sets the value of our universal constants, whose values are very necessary for the evolution of a life form, which are highly improbable, and sets those conditions from the very beginning. Now let's go back to our triangle for just a moment. Now we can see that there is a convergence of all three kinds of evidence 
on a single conclusion. We see from the first law of entropy, we see that there is very good evidence for a beginning of the universe, and especially that there cannot be an infinite number of bounces in the universe. There would have to be a beginning bounce. Indeed, probably that this may be the only um, uh, expansion of our universe since the Big Bang. We saw from space-time geometry that every single universal condition um, that we can possibly think of right now would have to have a beginning according to the Board of Vilenkin and Gu theorem. And we also saw this from the vantage point of the 1993 Board and Vilenkin proof, and we saw it from Alan Guth's mathematical analysis. Last of all, we've now seen that the anthropic coincidences point to a super-intelligent designer, leading to a super-intelligent, super-calculating creator of the universe as a whole. To learn more about this series and the Magis Center of Reason and Faith, please visit www.magisreasonfaith.org. That is www. M-A-G-I-S-R-E-A-S-O-N-F-A-I-T-H dot O-R-G. You may purchase Father Spitzer's book on this subject, New Proofs for the Existence of God, Contributions of Contemporary Physics and Philosophy, on the website or through Amazon.com.